Lieutenant Price, the meeting is underway. Enemy transport sighted entering the target area. A little over a year ago, I released a video on why I thought Menendez was the greatest Call of Duty villain of all time. A point I still stand by. So after about a year of bathing in that video's glory, I decided to read the comments. Turns out there were a surprising amount of people discussing the fact that I just completely disregarded a certain character, who apparently is just as good as Menendez. And since that video has gained a stupid amount of attention, which I cannot thank you enough for. Ow, fuck, ow. I thought I would give the people what they want, and look back to see if this character is worthy of the same praise. So, is Vladimir Makarov a good villain? Makarov is the main antagonist for Modern Warfare 2 and 3, but has apparently been influencing the series ever since the first installment, always unseen and hiding in the background through the power of retcons. He did a lot of mean and dare I say a couple of rude things as well, building ties with arms dealers, warlords and Inrim Zakaev, who uh, you've um... You've met. Because of these connections, he amassed so much power, he was able to influence a group of men and take their hatred of the West and just turn that shit up to 11. Running a giant terrorist militia of ultra-nationalist soldiers whose sole purpose is to free Russia from its governed weakness, allowing it to take all of Europe and stand alone as the one true superpower, achieving this through any means necessary. Russia will take all of Europe. Even if it must stand upon a pile of ashes. Some of the things that were orchestrated by Makarov are truly awful. From citywide gas attacks which killed hundreds of innocent people, to detonating the nuke from the first game which killed 30,000 men under the command of one General Shepard, who, um, didn't take it well. This caused Shepard to fall into a lifelong bloodlust, trying to avenge his fallen men, which led him to create one of the biggest tragedies in history, and one of the most controversial moments in gaming. Remember, no Russian. No Russian is one of the most famous moments in gaming history, and it's what for many people cement Makarov as this impactful, monstrous villain. And it's not hard to see why. Casually strolling into an airport with machine guns, brutally gunning down innocent people, families left bleeding out and babies left motherless in a pile of bodies. And there you are to witness everything placed there in order to get close to Makarov, which in hindsight is a terrible tactical move. I forgot when SEAL Team 6 found Bin Laden, they did it by hijacking planes and flying them into fucking buildings. Who thought this was a good idea? Throughout all of this, Makarov calmly gives orders to his men as if it was just another mission. He's not happy or sad to kill these people, it's just a means to an end, a bullet point on a greater plan, which is arguably more disturbing than if he was just a sociopath with a big old grin on his face. Nothing he does is for no reason. These atrocities are well thought out and meticulously planned to serve his mission. After committing one of the most devastating terrorist attacks in history, Makarov guns you down and leaves you for dead, as he knew all along your intentions. The Americans thought he could deceive us. When they find that body, all of Russia will cry for war. And it worked, allowing him to achieve destruction on a monumental scale. After this moment, Makarov isn't seen again in the second game, apart from a phone call he gets from Captain Price, so they can find General Shepard, which is a whole other thing. Shepard's done some shit, 
Price wants revenge. They're having like a bit of a domestic, bit of a spat. But, you know, it doesn't matter. I'm sure they'll work it out. So, that's the second game. That brings us to the third game that starts off with Makarov up his old tricks of kidnapping the Russian president, taking his plane out of the sky, and trying to find his daughter so he can torture her for the launch codes to begin the end of the Western world. Unfortunately, there's not much left to his character. The games just portray him as being this very evil guy. And yeah, he did a lot of awful things, but why? Where I could go on and on about the complexities of Menendez's character, his drive and his philosophy, there's very little to talk about with Makarov in the way of character depth. This is mainly due to the fact he has four scenes in the entire franchise, with the main part of the story being more of a game of hide and seek trying to find Makarov. Makarov falls into that too common slot of a villain who only shows up to do bad things and then isn't seen again till the end of the game, which is really frustrating because Makarov out of all of them shows the most potential. We only get a couple of brief glimpses into his mind, one of which being the opening to Modern Warfare 3, where he delivers a speech talking about the hypocrisy of government and the flexibility of truth when it's written by the victor. We also get possibly one of the best lines in the game. Our enemies believe that they alone dictate the course of history. That all it takes is the will of a single man. Now this might just seem like a throwaway bad guy line, but it tells us so much more about the will of Makarov and the lengths he's willing to go. But as it stands, there's not really much to differentiate him from any other villain. Unlike Menendez, where he's constantly there taunting the player, enacting personal and horrific acts of cruelty right in front of you, going out of his way to hurt these characters specifically as much as he can to fulfill his vendetta, learning all of his philosophy through him himself. But we have to learn a lot about Makarov through other characters like Volk and all these news articles about him, but most notably, Yuri an old friend of Makarov who betrayed him just before No Russian as he witnessed Makarov's thirst for power and the destruction it was causing, deeming it insanity masked by patriotism. One of the main problems of Makarov is he doesn't really do anything to the player. Yeah, he kills a bunch of characters, including Soap, who we've been with through the entirety of the series, but it wasn't out of hatred or fury, it was simply war. He didn't even know Soap was in there with Yuri, it was more of a happy little accident. So much of his character is wasted with the minimal screen time he's given. If he had just been there in the game with the player, it could have been way more impactful. Think why Menendez is such a powerful villain. He's there, you interact with him, you can sympathise with him, but try and feel anything for Makarov other than kind of a bitterness. Ultimately, Makarov's plan on destroying the West fails, as Captain Price saves the President and his daughter with the expense of... a lot of their men. Makarov is forced to face defeat and flee to hiding out in one of the most lavish hotels I've ever seen. Poor bastard. Even though he lacks a lot of depth in the story, one of the best parts of his character, in my opinion, is his relationship with Captain Price, which, as you can imagine, is filled with nothing but hate both sides. Captain Price was the man who slid the gun over that killed Makarov's mentor and friend, Zakayev. Even though Soap shot him, as the leader, Price inherited the blame. Also, Price attempted to assassinate Zakayev in the Cold War, which initiated all of this. In retaliation, Makarov captures Price and leaves him to die in the Gulag, a place where he has to fight every day just to survive, which given the look of this place could be seen as crueler than killing him. After escaping, Price wants nothing more than to kill Makarov. At a few points, it seems this hatred is driving Price into a much darker place, as he, against everyone's orders, begins to launch nukes at America to end the assault on Washington. Which, yeah, it works, but how was he not court-martialed for that immediately? In the second game, this relationship takes a backseat to the Shepard story arc, but in the third game, after being deemed war criminals, losing everything, Price loses his closest friend, Soap McTavish, to Makarov, holding his hand as he bleeds out on the table, surrounded by gunfire, refusing to leave his friend. No, no, no! Soap! You have to go now! Get off me! Sorry. Then Soap dies, Yuri flies, and with more guns than anyone could hold, 
they take Makarov's castle. You'd expect an incredible confrontation here, but guess what? He's not fucking here! Why is it so hard to find this fucker? Bryce is also quite brutal in this mission, and you can just hear the pain in his voice. There's a clock tower in Hereford where the names of the dead are inscribed. We try to honor their deeds, even as their faces fade from our memory. Those memories are all that's left when the bastards have taken everything else. What happened? He killed Soap. He's gone, Mac. The two-story crescendos in the final mission, with the last two remaining men of Task Force 141 armoring up and storming into the hotel Makarov's hiding out in. Not through orders or contracts, the war is over. This is personal. Who's this? Prisoner 627. I'm coming for you, Makarov. Haven't you heard, Price? They say the war is over. My war ends with you. Like it ended for Captain McTavish? Tell me, Price. How long did it take him to die? I've destroyed your world piece by piece. It's only a matter of time until I find you. You won't have to look far. Bodies falling as Makarov's men try to hold off these juggernauts. Attempting anything they can to hold them off with no effect. But instead of fighting the man he has sworn to kill, he runs as fast as he can to a helicopter, which seems strange for him. He's supposed to be this big scary soldier, but when faced head on with a real threat, he cowardly runs away. He's tried to kill Price before, but it was from safety, detonating other people. But nothing like this, how can he confront a man so driven by anger? Opting to flee for the helicopter, but even in the sky he can't run fast enough from Captain Price. Guy's a fucking unit! Unlike the vast majority of villains, Makarov has a poetic and satisfying end. Emerging from the fiery wreck of his helicopter, seemingly unkillable, like a demon crawling from hell, and seconds away from killing you. All you can do is watch, hopelessly bleeding out on the floor, using every bit of strength you have to crawl for the pistol. And just as your fingers reach it, Makarov crushes your hand, takes it, and raises it to your head. He's won. Yuri, the one who betrayed Makarov, saves your life, sacrificing his own. And with this distraction, you get your chance. And just watch. The man who butchered and killed millions. The one who killed your friend and gassed children. Being hung for his crimes by the one man he hated the most. Now tell me that's not sick. It's a way cooler death than he deserved, but I'm not complaining, that was awesome. Now is Makarov this amazing villain everyone gives him credit for? Kinda? He's appropriate for the story he's in, but he's not anything special. But if given more time to develop, and more screen time, he could have been something amazing, and it pains me to say that because I really wanted to like Makarov, there was so much to his character that was just wasted. I don't think he deserves to be put on the same level as Menendez, but I do think he's better than your average Russian bad guy. So there's your answer. Makarov is okay.